It is now the year 2019, and the smartphone scene has witnessed huge, huge enhancements throughout the past few years, mostly focused on displays. First, you had the Samsung Galaxy S8 with its Infinity display, followed by iPhone X's notch, which introduced a new notch trend and was adapted by so many phone brands. You had like the OnePlus, the Oppo, and even Huawei. Putting that aside, OnePlus has recently been developing amazing, amazing phones, with their most recent phone being the OnePlus 6T, with its revolutionary technology, not the first, but definitely one of the best, in display fingerprint sensors. Putting new devices aside, OnePlus has had amazing, amazing devices in the past, starting off with the OnePlus One, followed by the OnePlus Two, the Three, 3T. So these old phones have been really successful in the sense that it has been receiving really, really good development, even from the OnePlus team themselves. I'll be taking a look to the OnePlus 2 which is currently the device that I own and I use as a daily driver. Unfortunately, the OnePlus team decided to end the support at Android 6.0 without producing an Android Nougat for this phone, although it had more than enough capabilities to run the operating system. Thankfully though, in our part, we have got great, great third-party developers that has constantly been supporting this device going through the phases of Android Nougat 7.0, Android Oreo 8.0, and even right now, Android Pi 9.0. This device has come a long, long way since its first launch in August 2015, and it has already been four years since this device was launched, and yet, surprisingly, it still runs super smoothly with all these new custom ROMs. This device has received numerous big name ROMs, for example, Resurrection Remix, Lineage OS, even Cyanogen Mod. But the ROM we'll be talking about today is Havoc OS. And this ROM is designed and created by the one, the only, Simply Jeeves. Havoc OS is kind of a mix between functionality and customization. So without further ado, I'm Umesh from the Tech Grid and I'll be reviewing Havoc OS for the OnePlus 2. So really quickly, taking a look at the settings, we are running Havoc OS on Android Pi for the OnePlus 2. As you can see, device name 18203, which is the 64 gig variant of the OnePlus 2, Android Pi, and having the kernel version of Stealth, which is the default kernel that comes with this ROM. We are running Havoc OS version 2.2, which uh, is maintained by Simply Jeeves himself. It's official. It says it's official here at least. And yeah. As you can see, the OnePlus gestures are working, the draw circle for camera, music, and draw V for flashlight. Moving on, we got the alert slider customization. First option, we have the swap buttons, and then we also have the alert slider options for total silence, alarms only, priority only, all notifications, and ring. As you guys can see, even digital well-being is up and running fine. I can track my app's usage, and this was one of the interesting features in Android Pie, and we can see it fully working in this ROM. Moving on to the battery settings, as you can see, I can't really show you my battery pattern over here, but I will make sure I show a few uh, battery usage patterns from other users of this ROM with the stock kernel, which is the stock kernel. And so here are a few um, battery usages that I got that was actually submitted to a Discord channel dedicated to the OnePlus 2. Moving on to the Havoc settings, as you can see there's loads of customizations here. There's really really a lot of customizations you can do. First one is status bar. As you can see they got the double tap to sleep, smart pull down, quick pull down, breathing voice mail, breathing voice messages, battery styles, battery bars, carrier labels, and even icons for the status bar. 
Next up, we got the quick settings uh, customization. As you can see, we can customize the layout of our quick settings tab to increase the number of rows or columns, either in portrait mode or landscape mode. Other settings include brightness slider customization, we can add the auto uh, brightness icon, brightness control, we can also make the tiles vibrate on touch. Moving on to the interface, as you can see there's a few things you can change here. UI style, we got the light, the dark and the black option. Uh, we can change the notification color uh, to either the same thing, white, dark or black. And we can even change the accent color. So, as far as this goes, it really allows you to customize the interface of this ROM. So even if you want a system-wide black mode, your system will be 100% in black mode. Then we also have other things like font size, uh, display size. Uh, you can use different fonts. They have a font manager. As you can see, I'm using the Google Sans font. And you can also do other things like uh, switch the appearance of your settings. There's a dedicated OnePlus 2 style so it makes your settings all uh, standard colored instead of the stock Android Pie colorful. You can even change your dashboard icons to make it round around in OnePlus style and many more. Moving on, we got the ambient display options where it gives you a music ticker, uh, maybe it will flash when new notification comes up. You also have the option for always on, though I've had some problems in the past getting this enabled. Maybe I just had to wait for a longer time or something. But yeah, the option is there. And we got other options like to show the battery level when the ambient display comes up. There's other stuff uh, sensor related, they have the tilt sensor, pickup sensor, and all but more customizations. Moving on, it's a screen option. As you can see, there's a lot of options. We can have a built-in system round corner. We can adjust the round corner radius and the corner content packing. There's also this option for smart pixels, but uh, just bear in mind here, the smart pixel options, how it works is it basically turns off certain pixels on your display to further save battery. But since this OnePlus 2 is using an LCD display and not an AMOLED display, it can't actually turn off individual pixels. So this basically has no effect whatsoever on the OnePlus 2 except for just maybe reducing the quality of your display. Moving on, we have the buttons option. As you can see, there's a lot of options here to adjust the power menu, uh, prevent accidental touch when you're holding the hardware buttons, uh, screen off power button touch, which basically when your screen is off, press and hold your power button and the torch turns on. Moving on, you got the volume rocker settings. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff you can customize, music controls, you can kind of press and hold your power up or power down volume uh, buttons to kind of uh, seek the track. So let's say you're listening to music, you can kind of push it forward or uh, go back to the previous song. Other options uh, include your volume sliders. When you use your volume down button to adjust the sliders, you can increase the number of sliders you see. By default, there's only uh, your media volume uh, slider. You can also increase uh, it to also display your ring volume slider, your notification volume slider, your Bluetooth volume slider, and even your alarms volume slider. Back to the buttons, there's also option to customize your hardware button actions. As you can see, uh, maybe a long press on home action, you could set it to open a Google Assistant or even launch your camera app. Moving on to the next settings is navigation bar. Nothing much to show here, this just basically enables your navigation bar. Next up we got gestures where it has to jump to camera, swipe up on home button which is what most of us see on pixel devices. Moving on we also have pie controls where uh, most of you guys would know this from Cyanogen Mod, first introduced in Android KitKat. Moving on to the lock screen settings, as you can see there's a lot of options here. We have double tap to sleep, media cover art which is what I use. And there's also options to turn on a music visualizer which kind of adds a music visualizer to the bottom of your lock screen. Other options include a show ambient display when you're playing music on the lock screen. 
and even face auto unlock, uh, fingerprint unlock when you boot, and uh, many more. Moving on to the recents options, we have a few options to customize our recents menu here. Uh, the default one is Quick Step, which is introduced in Android 9.0, where it sees a kind of iPhone X style uh, recents tab. The other types include, of course, the stock, which is the stock uh, recent launcher you see in Android Oreo, Android Nougat, and even Android Marshmallow. There are two other options here for the recent style, which is Android Go and Slim uh, Recents, which Slim Recents was introduced, if I'm not mistaken, in Omni-ROM, and Android Go Recents, of course, was introduced when the first Android Go project was launched. Moving on to the notification option, uh, as you can see, there's a lot of things you can customize here. Firstly, battery charging light, uh, disable force close notifications, I uh, can customize our heads up notifications, and even enable uh, notification tickers. We can also customize the toast icons here in the notifications tab. And there's also options for kill app button, vibrate on call, uh, vibrate on call disconnect, vibrate on call connect. And yeah, moving on to the next option, which would be uh, animations. So animations, I believe we all know what animations are. It's just basically system animations, for example, like app open or swipe animations, list view animations, and so on. Moving on to the system tab, nothing much here. You can just uh, show CPU info, privacy guard, and just a few more options. There are three other options down here, which is IME settings, battery saving, and miscellaneous. It's so nothing major, not no major customizations there, so I won't even be uh, covering that part. So guys, uh, in conclusion, this ROM is really really amazing so far. The feedback has been great. It is really smooth. Uh, it is kind of battery friendly, I should say. So as I was saying, my final thoughts on this ROM would be, it's a great performing ROM. It's decently stable. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please um, like the video, of course. Uh, comment below if you have any suggestions or maybe ways that I can improve my ROM reviews. Or even maybe you have questions, just don't be afraid to comment it below. I will be more than happy to answer your questions. Definitely subscribe to my channel. As you can see, this is my first ever video. It's still a new channel, but I would really love to grow this channel. So right now, I'll be covering OnePlus 2, which is my daily drive, as I mentioned in the intro. Uh, covering custom ROMs, custom kernels. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. And stay cool. This is Umesh signing off from the Tech Grid. Peace out.